guys, welcome back to my channel. So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make one of these beautiful Lambeth cakes, also known as a piped vintage cake. So before I show you how to decorate the actual cake, I'm going to show you how each of the piping tips that I've used for this cake work and how to create some beautiful borders and different decorations. So here's a little close up to show you how each piping tip works. So as I mentioned, I have a non-stick mat to practice the piping on. This is a really great way to practice piping because you can just clean up all the buttercream after and reuse it. I've also got some ready-made buttercream in some piping bags with various piping tips on. However, I don't usually use these. Because I want to be using the same color with different piping tips, I've actually got something called a coupla. So I will show you how this works exactly in a moment, but it's an extra extension to the piping tip, which you can then remove the piping tip from and replace it with another one without using too many piping bags. I've also got some different tips here, and I'm gonna show you exactly how I'm going to use each one on the map before we go on to the cake. So I'm going to start off with my white buttercream first, and this has a very small star tip. The small star tips are my favorite. I think you get really pretty scrolls with them and some nice defined details. So, as usual, I'm going to twist the open edge of the piping bag so it remains closed and all the pressure is going to come from my fingers. To pipe a scrolled border, all I'm going to do is angle the piping bag slightly away from where I'm piping. I'm going close to the mat, I'm going to push and do a small wave and then come back down and let go and drag. That is a scroll and if I do it repeatedly next to each other, I begin to make a lovely border. Up and down, up and down each time. Just to show you the difference between this one and a larger star tip, such as this one which I've got on the pink piping bag, same action, push, move up and down, up and down. It's really clear to see the difference between the two sizes. The pink one is a lot fuller, whereas the white one is much more narrow and more refined. Now, because the white one is smaller, you can also do other piped details, such as a scroll on its own, up and down, that same motion, or if you do two next to it, you get a sort of royal scroll, which looks really nice on the cake. Another way is to do a more circular scroll, so kind of around and over and into an S shape around and up. So it's almost like two rosettes together, which also look really pretty on the cake. If you try to do it with a larger tip, it's going to get a little bit lost. So what I've got on the lighter pink buttercream is a veined leaf tip. So it's quite an unusual looking shape, which is usually used for piping leaves. However, if you do the same sort of pattern as we did with the star tips, you get a sort of ribbon effect like so. Go up and over, go up and over, up and over. Squeezing each time and stop squeezing when you get to the bottom of it. Which looks also really nice as a piped border, almost like a ribbon. Now here I have a classic leaf tip and because it's not on a piping bag yet, I'm going to show you exactly how to change it from one of the existing bags. So the coupler is in two parts. I'm going to twist this one off. You can take that off. And then the piping tip comes off. And now you can replace the piping tip and screw that top bit back on. So the new tip is attached. And I forgot to mention that there is another piece that's inside the piping bag. When you do purchase one of these couplers, it does come with instructions on how to use them. If I do the exact same pattern with this leaf tip, you can see the difference and they both look really lovely. Squeeze and push down, squeeze, push down every time. So if you put lots of them together and try to keep the pressure exactly the same, it also looks like a ribbon. So they're both really nice effects using different tips, but they look very similar. Now here is a classic petal tip because this also creates a really nice piped border. So I'm going to twist off this part of the coupler, place the new tip on and screw it back on. 
now the petal tip is secured. Now usually with a petal tip you need to know where the narrow point is which is here and the narrow point will always face outside the cake. So I'm going to do an example over here of ruffling. So similar to how you would do with a normal petal and a flower, if you do small arches next to each other you get a really nice ruffled effect. So I've shown you the difference between a scrolled pipe border and more of a ruffled one. So now it's time to get piping directly on the cakes and like I said the best part about using a non-slip mat is you can clean it right up. So I've got a side scraper and I can just scrape away that buttercream and put it into a bowl ready to use again. So nothing goes to waste. So let's get piping on the cake. So now it's time to put those piping techniques directly onto the cake. I've got a six inch cake and a four inch which I'm going to pair up in a sweet little two tier cake. But before I go on with the piping tips, I want to mark exactly where I'm going to be piping. So when I've practiced Lambeth cakes, I've completely eyeballed where all the loops go and each individual scroll goes and try to keep it as even as possible. And I think that's the hardest part when it comes to one of these piped cakes is to have it so symmetrical. And if it's not symmetrical, it can look a little bit, you know. So to prevent exactly that, I've teamed up with Lissy Lou and have produced the ultimate piping guide for cakes. So this guide has the measurements for a four, six, eight and 10 inch cake. And it also has different markings on it depending on how many pipe details you want to include. So for example, the four inch, you can choose between four to six individual points around the cake. And for all the other sizes, you can go up to eight different points and they are all symmetrical and I'm gonna show you exactly how to use it. I am so excited by this product and I think a part of the reason why I wasn't doing a Lambeth cake tutorial, I suppose, before this is because I didn't have one of these and I just didn't wanna eyeball it and for it not to be perfect. So, with the guide and with my six inch cake, I'm going to place it directly on top. And using the toothpick, I'm going to mark eight identical points on top of the cake. So there's two, four, carefully lift it up. And of course it helps the buttercream being cold. And now I have marked eight perfectly symmetrical and even points around the cake. So now I have that, I'm now going to use cookie cutters to mark the loop in between each one. So I've got various sizes here. So I'm just going to line some up until I get a perfect amount. So I'm just going to line each one up until I get a perfect width. So that one's a little bit narrow. I think the largest one will be perfect. So I'm just going to mark a loop using half of the cookie cutter against the cake, keeping it between those two lines. And repeat around the cake. So now I have a perfect guide to pipe on my buttercream. But what I'm going to do is actually tear the cake and then go on with the decorations. So I've got my four inch here. I'm just going to place a little bit of buttercream on the top of the cake, place the four inch directly on, and now do exactly the same with the four inch. So I'm gonna place the guide on, and the maximum amount on the four inch is six points. So I'm gonna do one, two, three, four, five, and six. And because I've done six on a smaller tier, it might need another measurement. So I'm doing a different cutter size thing and do the same thing, mark around the edges. So now I can get piping. So I've got my piping bags all ready to go. And something I forgot to mention earlier is that I love sticking to no more than two colors on one of these cakes. So you can start incorporating more colors, but it can look really busy because it's quite a busy cake anyway. The idea of these cakes are that they're really delicate and elegant. So I personally think sticking to two colors, so I've got white and pink, but different shades of pink is the best way to do it. So I'm going to start off with doing these ruffles because I want these secured on the cake and everything else is gonna be piped on top of them. So I'm going to start off with a lighter shade of pink with the veined leaf tip. And of course, it's going to feel a little bit different piping onto the cake vertically than the mat. So which is why I always suggest practice on the mat first before you go onto the cake. 
and do the exact same motion. Squeeze, pull, squeeze, pull, following the line around the side of the cake. Beautiful little ruffle, and I'm going to continue that all the way around the cake. Perfectly symmetrical loops of ruffles. So I'm gonna do the exact same thing on the six inch tier. Already this cake looks amazing. So what I'm gonna do now is focus on the borders. And you've obviously seen that I haven't bothered fill in the gap in between the two tiers. But because I'm going on with pipe borders, I'm going to fill that up anyway. So I'm going to start off with the petal tip with the white and give it a nice delicate ruffled edge. So just like before, thin part facing out, doing small arches around the edges of the cake. And the hardest part of these cakes is to, of course, repeat the same motion over and over again, which takes a lot of practice. And I like the ruffles just overhanging the edges of the cake just ever so slightly. And now it's time for a piped border. So I'm using the darker pink with the larger star tip for the piped border. So I'm going to hide the seam in between the two tiers first, doing those big scrolls up and down all the way around. And I'm gonna go around the base of the cake too. Same scrolls. And the same thing on the top of the cake. Over and pull. That last one always has a slight flick to it. So I try and line all those ones up so they can be at the back of the cake. I'm now gonna go directly on top of that border with a smaller star tip and the lighter pink for a little bit of contrast, starting at the bottom. Same motion, but obviously you'll be doing a lot more because it's a smaller tip. So on this second border, it's also nice to do more of those swirly borders too. I'm gonna to keep it simple though. And what I also like doing where the loops meet is just one scroll upwards. So push and pull up. And it's a really nice way to join the loops together and add a little bit more detail. And I actually think it does need one looped border right in the middle at the top, just to tie it all together. Oh, I love it. So just to finish off the cake, I've got some small little sprinkles that I'm going to put on top of those scrolls that I piped last. And they almost look like little gems. Now the cake looks extremely royal. And I'm keeping the theme by alternating white and pink. So there we go, a perfectly symmetrical Lambeth cake and I absolutely love it. It was so helpful using this new guide. I've linked this product in the description box of the video so be sure to check one out and get your hands on it because it's going to change your piping game, I can promise you. I've never done such a symmetrical cake without it. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and found it helpful and have given you the confidence to try one of these cakes out yourself. If you do try it out, please tag me at George's Cakes on Instagram because I would absolutely love to see it. You tag me in so many of your creations, it just makes me so, so happy. Please like this video, subscribe to my channel, and we'll see you soon for more tutorials.